You're watching Al Jazeera live from Doha, a reminder of the latest developments in Israel's war on Gaza. Palestinians in Gaza are enduring another day of mass killing from north to south. Within the last few hours, an Israeli strike killed at least 18 members of a family sheltering at home near Rafah. It happened in one of the few areas Israel has said is a safe zone. Al Jazeera correspondent Momin Al Sharafi has lost 22 members of his family in Israeli airstrikes. His mother and father, along with his siblings, nieces, and nephews, were killed when the Israeli army bombed the Jabalia refugee camp on Wednesday morning. And the United Nations Secretary General has invoked his most powerful diplomatic tool to try to stop the bloodshed in Gaza. Antonio Guterres is directing the Security Council to discuss what he calls a humanitarian catastrophe and is calling for an urgent ceasefire. Let's now take a look at some of the day's other news. And Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro is calling for a bail to create a new province in an area administered by Guyana after voters approved taking over the oil-rich Essequibo region in a referendum. Maduro also wants oil companies working there under Guyana's approval to withdraw. Guyana's president has called Maduro's statement a direct threat against his country. The case is pending at the International Court of Justice, which has barred Caracas from taking any action in the area. The White House is warning against conflict. We will discuss to create firm legislation to prohibit hiring companies that operate or collaborate with the unilateral concessions given by Guyana in parts of the sea that's yet to be divided. It will be done through special laws. I suggest that in this law we give these companies three months to abandon those operations in the parts of the sea where the borders are yet to be set. Three months. We are open to talking. Everything in a good manner. Nothing in a bad manner. Respect for international law, for the laws, for good neighbors and for coexistence. Well, as you can see on the following map, the Essequibo region makes up about two-thirds of Guyana's territory. Venezuela claims that the Essequibo River to the region's east forms a natural border. Now, Guyana says the current border was determined by an arbitration panel in 1899 when it was under British colonial rule. Caracas says Essequibo was within its boundaries during Spanish colonial times. The dispute resurfaced after ExxonMobil discovered oil there in 2015. Guyana started auctioning off oil blocks in August this year. The region is home to 125,000 people and covers 160,000 square kilometers. That's an area bigger than the whole of Greece. Well, joining us now on Al Jazeera, live from Georgetown, the capital of Guyana, is President Irfan Ali. Mr. President, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Can I ask you first your reaction to Venezuelan voters approving a referendum claiming rights over Essequibo? Well, first of all, as we said before, uh, Venezuela has the right to do, uh, do whatever referendum they want to do. However, as we went to the uh, ICJ, we, we went to the ICJ specifically to seek orders against a referendum that seek to annex Essequibo, uh, which is part of Guyana, and against the questions that were in that referendum. That, the questions in the referendum sought to give Venezuela the authority to act in annexing the Essequibo, setting up administrative mechanism, issuing ID cards, and the ICJ <clears throat> ruled overwhelmingly, mm. uh, the, the, uh, unanimously, the ICJ ruled unanimously that Venezuela must not act on the outcome of this referendum. They ruled that status quo must remain, that is, Essequibo remains. Uh, within the territory of Guyana, right. and that Guyana continues to administer governance in Essequibo. The ICJ was very, very clear in its order. Notwithstanding right. this order, after the referendum on Sunday, last evening, President Maduro moved to announce a series of measures that point to the annexation of Essequibo, establishment of an administrative mechanism to govern uh, Essequibo, and to give ultimatum to companies operating within Essequibo uh, to, to remove themselves within three months. This is a blatant disregard for international order, the order of the ICJ, and international law, and definitely not in keeping 
uh, with being a member of the United Nations fam United Nations family right. of nations. Right. Now, I as a result, to, I to... can I ask you, Mr. President, as a result of these measures that you just outlined that uh, Venezuela took, I understand that your country, Guyana, has put its defense forces on full alert. Are you prepared to go to war over this? Well, let, let me put it this way. We want this region to remain a region of peace and stability. That is our uh, foremost concern. That is our priority. We want to ensure that, that we do all that we can to ensure that this region remains a region of peace and stability. That is why we are advising Venezuela not to act recklessly and in an adventurous manner. If you so want this to do? remain a region of peace, as you say, why have you put your forces on alert? So why, why should we, we be in a position to defend what is ours? We went to the, we went to the, ICE, the United Nations Security Council this morning and uh, to, to alert the Secur Security Council. We have called upon all our regional partners. CARICOM, Commonwealth, and the OAS have all issued very strong statements. We are working with our allies in a precautionary manner, in a precautionary manner, to ensure that we keep our people safe and ensure the ter territorial integrity and sovereignty of Guyana. Have you requested military assistance, Mr. Mr. President, advancing? from your allies in the region? Have you requested military assistance from, from your regional allies, including the U.S. or Cuba? We have tremendous uh, defense cooperation uh, with the United States Department of Defense. We, have, uh, we hosted the trade winds exercise up, up to this year. So there is an elaborate uh, defense cooperation with the United States that is ongoing. And uh, we have brought this uh, SOLCOM, we have brought the Department of Defense, we have brought Brazil, CARICOM, Commonwealth, the OS. We have brought all of them in the loop as to what Venezuela is doing, the way they're tramping upon international law, the reckless behavior of President Maduro. But importantly, I want to correct a statement earlier. The, the borders between Guyana and Venezuela was settled in 1899 with the full participation of Venezuela and British Guyana. Both of them signed off on the border. Venezuela then enacted in their local laws the borders as established in 1899. The borders were then, stamps were then produced. Venezuela, <clears throat> when we were going to independence, then raised a controversy. The Geneva Agreement provided that if the two parties did not resolve the controversy, then the United Nations Secretary General would determine where the controversy uh, will be resolved. Right. The UNSG has determined that the controversy be resolved in the ICJ. The question is, why, why is Venezuela afraid to face the ICJ? They have already participated in the process before the ICJ by, uh, by going to argue that the court does not have jurisdiction twice. Mm -hmm. They lost that case. They participated when we went for provisional measures by no less a person than the vice president. So they have, it's double standard. Okay. They've participated in because they don't have their way. They're now saying that they're not going to respect the outcome of the court. Why do you think President Maduro has done this now? Why? I didn't get that question. Why do you think President Maduro has, has done, has gone ahead and done this now, this move? Well, there are many school of thoughts. One, 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 uh, one school of thought is that he is trying to distract from the current political situation in Venezuela. Guyana has welcomed many Venezuelan migrants to our shores. We are providing support for them. We have welcomed them with love. We'll continue to show them love because that is who we are. We are a law-abiding country, a law-abiding people. We respect the rule of law. We respect peace, and we understand that we have to coexist as neighbors. Okay. So there's one school of thought that he's doing this for his selfish political uh, reasons at home. He wants to create a distraction that he's not doing well in the polls. That is one opinion. The second opinion can be <clears throat> uh, one of greed. One of greed. Simply that. Okay. Can I ask you briefly, Mr. President, before we let you go, you've, as you said, asked the UN Security Council to consider intervening. What exactly would you like to, to see the Security Council do today? Well, first of all, we want this region to remain a region of peace and stability. We would like the United Nations Security Council to issue a very strong statement to Venezuela in relation to, the, to, to Venezuela breaching the order of the ICJ, an, an order that can be enforceable. And we would like to see the full commitment of the United Nations Security Council to ensure 
that they do everything to, 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 to have this region remains a region of peace and stability and for them to support uh, international law, for them to call upon Venezuela okay. to support and respect uh, international law and have the controversy settled where it is. That is before the ICJ. Mr. President, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Irfan Ali, President thank of you. Guyana, talking to thank us you. on Al Jazeera. Thank you for your time. Thank you.